Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the amount of practice that is required to learn motor skills. Uh, so there is a concept called overlearning, which refers to uh, when we practice above and beyond the amount that was actually required to uh, meet certain performance criterion for a motor skill. So basically, we mean when we practice and practice and learn a motor skill, and then when we continue to practice beyond that minimal amount, that is called overlearning. Um, so that is done on purpose as a learning strategy. So I know overlearning may sound like it's a bad thing, but it's not necessarily. Um, so overlearning is an intentional learning strategy that helps reinforce generalized motor programs and our motor response to whatever stimuli our, we're interacting with uh, can increase the stability of the coordination and control characteristics in the skill performance, and it can have a positive influence on retention performance, which is proportionate to the amount of extra practice, meaning that in some cases and to some extent, more practice will often mean more retention later on. But that's not always true, and that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, so for procedural skills, first, let's talk about what procedural skills are. Uh, those are motor skills that require someone to perform a series of movements that the movements themselves are easy to execute. The person is very capable physically of executing those uh, movements. But the trick is that a uh, procedural skill combines cognitive and motor components and the components of the, the overall series of movements, the components all need to be performed correctly and in the correct order. Um, so that can include skills like typing or assembling something that includes multiple parts and multiple steps. Uh, like think about the last time you got a piece of furniture that required assembly. Well, you need to be capable of each step that takes place in the assembly of that piece of furniture. Um, and you have to do the you have to do them in the correct order. If you do them out of order, then you could end up with a problem and have to go back and, and start again. So those are procedural skills. Um, the issue with procedural skills is that people tend to forget what they need to do to carry out the entire procedure from start to finish. So like maybe you practice and learn a certain procedural skill, but then without enough practice or without continuing to practice, if you're tested on that skill nine months from now, you may not remember exactly what to do or what order the movements need to take place in. Uh, so for procedural skills, overtraining is an effective strategy because it helps reinforce the procedure and, and allow for a greater amount of practice. So even once you've mastered that skill, it will help reinforce and help you remember later on uh, the components and the order of those components. Um, overlearning for dynamic balance skills. Uh, there's very little research in this area, um, but learners who continue practicing beyond what is needed perform better on retention tests. So again, overlearning is helpful to uh, improve performance on retention tests when tested later on. Uh, we also see this same effect in physical education class um, when they've done research on uh, learning strategies in PE class over learning is also effective there. Um, but I want to highlight that there is a point of diminishing returns. So where overlearning is beneficial across the board, it appears to be beneficial. Um, it's within reason. There comes a point where when we have too much practice, then there are diminishing returns where we won't necessarily experience better performance just because of more practice. And in some cases, we actually have worse performance because there's been too much practice. Um, so overlearning and poor test performance. Um, so as I mentioned, there's diminishing returns. So like, for example, um, 50 percent extra performance beyond what is absolutely required may increase learning and performance, um, but it may not necessarily be better than if you go through 100 percent additional practice beyond what is absolutely required. So there's diminishing returns. It's not necessarily more is better. Um, but beyond that, too many extra practice trials can actually cause learning deficits in some situations. 
Um, so that's where variable practice comes in, like I talked about in one of my previous videos. Um, rather than practicing the same skill again and again and again, practicing that singular skill can actually worsen performance um, with overlearning and we overlearn, we over practice. And if it's all the same skill, it can actually lead to worse learning and worse performance. But if we add in variable practice strategies, so we're practicing variations of that skill instead of the same exact skill, um, then it can continue to be productive. Um, some skills require an optimal amount of practice meaning that if we have too little practice or too much practice, both sides will result in decreased performance. So why? Why does overlearning sometimes decrease performance? So there are a few explanations that, um, I, I mean, these have been studied scientifically, but there's limited research and maybe not enough to draw firm conclusions, but there are a few ideas of what might be happening here. Um, so the first is boredom. So if practice is in excess, the learner might get bored. And when we get bored, we pay less attention. So it's important in learning that we pay attention. Cognitive effort is key to learning and improving and increasing performance later on. So the more bored we get, the less cognitive effort we exert and the less we actually get out of that practice. Uh, second is that too much practice of the same skill can decrease the learner's capability to remember the movement and to transfer to a movement variation. Um, so it's similar to the issue of cognitive effort. It's that when we're practicing the same skill again and again and again, we have to exert less and less effort as we practice that same exact skill because we've already got that motor plan kind of lined up, ready to go. We don't have to reestablish it or rethink or reconsider or or use any kind of attention or cognitive effort um, if we're just kind of on repeat with the same exact skill again and again. And then finally, practice of movement variations enhances the capability to remember and transfer to a related movement. So again, there's that issue of practice variation and movement variation. So amount of practice, research overwhelmingly shows that the amount of practice is not the critical variable influencing motor skill acquisition. So it is important, the amount of practice matters, but there are other variables that we have to consider along with just the sheer volume of practice. Um, and again, we can't necessarily say that the more practice, the better, because it really depends on all of these other variables. Um, so when we play around with these other practice variables, um, we might be able to allow for a greater volume of practice. We can allow for more and more practice to achieve expertise, but it's important that we're arranging these different variables so that we don't end up with diminishing um, performance outcomes instead of improving. So other important variables to consider, <clears throat> excuse me, would be uh, like the type and frequency of augmented feedback and variability of practice. So those two I've discussed in past videos and then distribution of practice, which I will discuss in my next video. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.